Well, thank you to my longtime friend, Frank Price, and congratulations to my very longtime friends, uh, Jennifer and Suzanne Todd, they're very deserving of this honor today. Uh, thank you to my dear friend, Dean Elizabeth Daly, one of the most dedicated, intelligent, passionate people I know, and to the extraordinary assistant dean, Bono Anton Cruz, as well as the entire faculty at the USC School of Cinematic Arts. I'm guessing that for most of you today is a day that plays out on two levels. On the one hand, it's a day to celebrate your amazing accomplishment with family and friends. On the other, it's a day when you can't help thinking about what may be in store for you as you start the next phase of your life. When I was invited to today's ceremony, it was suggested to be that I speak about my background and experiences in the film and television business. My apologies in advance to any of you who may have already heard me speak about my life and career prior to this. I hope these lessons I share bear repeating. Even though your journey through the entertainment industry is just beginning, there are a few things I can still share that hopefully may be of help to you. My mother and father were German Jews who escaped Nazi Germany in 1939 and immigrated to the United States and ultimately Los Angeles. My father was a traveling ladies dress salesman and I was raised in a very modest and loving home. My parents had planned that I would go to college, get a degree and find a proper job. To their disappointment, I dropped out of high school at the age of 15. I spent my days making money wherever I could, boxing, shooting pool, and getting into all kinds of trouble. They were relieved and proud when at 17 and a half I joined the Marine Corps. Well, in the Marines, I got the measles and was quarantined in a large hospital room by myself with nothing to do. My mother sent me two books. The first was titled The Amboy Dukes. It was about kids on the streets getting into trouble, which is what I had always done. And the second was entitled The Flesh Peddlers, a fictionalized story about a young man who worked at a major theatrical agency, drove a fast sports car, and dated beautiful women. It sounded to me like a great way to make a living and what I decided to pursue. <laughs> Although I didn't know anyone in the entertainment business, when I got out of active duty in the Marine Corps, I went door to door and applied to every talent agency in the phone book. Wherever I left an application, note, or got an interview, I told them I was willing to do any job available. I thought being a veteran would make a difference, but I was ignored or rejected by every one of them. It was clear that not having a formal education severely limited my possibilities. I had a job as a clothing salesman and basically gave up all hope of a career in show business. Out of nowhere, one of the agencies that I had met with remembered a guy named Ron who sold men's clothes at a store called Zeidler & Zeidler. They called on a Thursday to say their messenger had quit. They asked if I was still interested and available to start work on Monday. I said yes, and that was the start of my career. I was hired by the Paul Kohner Agency, a small but prestigious company which represented directors such as William Wyler, Billy Wilder, Ingmar Bergman, John Huston, among others. I had initially gotten the interview at Kohner because my mother's best girlfriend's husband's sister was married to Paul Kohner's brother. <laughs> so my first important lesson was education matters. My second was you never know how, when, and where an opportunity will present itself. I spent the next six years being the best driver, messenger, and gopher I could possibly be. I listened and learned and gratefully said yes to every crappy and menial job they asked me to do. I was once asked if there was a pivotal moment in my career, and I remembered the following. One of my duties at the agency was to file papers for Paul Kohner's assistant, who was my boss. Although I learned a lot from her, she was very demanding and occasionally very abusive, very abusive verbally. One day while sitting at my desk, which was in her office, I was filing papers. She objected to something that I had done and shouted at me in a particularly demeaning manner. It was her way of educating me, but it was also unnecessarily embarrassing and humiliating, and she had done it one time too often. After all, I was a veteran and had my pride. I got up and yelled loud enough that the 10 people who worked at the company could hear me say to her, take this job and shove it. 
I refuse to be treated this way. I quit. I walked out the door, knowing that everyone would come running after me, pleading for me to return. <laughs> after all, in my mind, I was an irreplaceable great messenger. I walked down the street slowly for about 10 minutes <laughs> until I realized that no one was coming after me. I now had my first major career decision and what ultimately would be a life-changing choice to make. I could go back to selling clothes or suck it up and try to return to work at the agency. I decided I wasn't ready to give up on show business. I went back to the desk, continued what I'd been doing, no explanations, no apologies, Everyone acted as if nothing had happened. <laughs> At that point in my career, the lesson was, never let your ego get in the way of your future. Always try to see the big picture. I'm not suggesting any kind of abuse is acceptable, but you have to pick your spots and try to think ahead about the outcome. I fortunately chose to lose the battle and win the war, having realized that no one is irreplaceable. There was an older agent at the company who used to listen to me complain, especially when I was feeling overworked, underpaid, and underappreciated. He told me a story about a man who worked in the elephant pens at the circus, cleaning up the elephant droppings. He constantly complained about having a horrible job. Not only was he not paid much money, but every time he cleaned up the pens, the elephants would make a new mess for him to clean. A man walking by over the man's complaints and said, you have the worst job in the circus, why don't you just quit? The elephant cleaner looked at the man who told him to quit and said, what, and give up on show business? <laughs> that guy was often and occasionally continues to be me and ultimately may be some of you. From the Kona Agency, through a number of interviews and more good fortune, I became a television agent at the William Morris Agency. I tell you all this to point out that if someone had been looking at me and what I had done up to that point when I was your age and several years older, I may have appeared to many, including myself, the least likely to do well. The question of whether or not I would succeed was still unanswered. After five years at William Morris, four of my fellow agents and I left and started Creative Artist Agency, where I remained as president for the next 20 years. In 1995, I left CAA and went to Universal Studios as president and chief operating officer, overseeing the worldwide operations for film, theme parks, and Universal's physical studio, and it's then 15,000 employees. I've been with the company for more than 22 years, now sit as vice chairman of NBC Universal, getting involved in all aspects of the global media company. Now, as I look back on my career, I realize there were a number of things that made a difference and that helped me along the way. So here are several guiding principles that have been important to me and I'm hoping might be of some use to you. First, whatever you do, do it as best you can with a positive attitude. Try to remember that no job is too small or unimportant, even if it seems that way at the moment. Second, treat people the way you want to be treated. The golden rule is not as easy to ex execute as you may think. Many times that sentiment is not appreciated or returned. Be strong, generous, honest, thoughtful, and kind. This business often gets a bad rap, but you will find that most people in the industry are decent and hardworking. Nice guys don't have to finish last. Third, as you move ahead in your career, you may have to make some tough decisions. And when you do, to the greatest extent possible, take people's lives and feelings into consideration. Then you can make those decisions with a clear conscience. Fourth, ultimately you want the story of your life to be one that you're proud of, and that means safeguarding your personal integrity. It is something of enormous value, and if it's ever lost, it is very difficult to restore. Jobs come and go, but your reputation matters. It sets the stage for how you are perceived and respected. Fifth, I've always found that the two best phrases in any, interact any interaction are ultimately yes and thank you. You don't have to be an asshole to succeed. Don't mistake kindness for weakness. <laughs> Sixth, fear or pride should never get in your way. Ask questions and never be embarrassed 
if you don't know the answers and understand you will sometimes make mistakes. I've made many and continue to do so. Early in my career at Universal, when we were in desperate need of a successful film, I turned down Titanic, which up to Avatar was the highest grossing film of all time. I made that decision 21 years ago and I'm now just getting over it. <laughs> you, you too will make mistakes. Don't be afraid to admit and own them. In any case, you won't fool anyone. Many years ago, I saw a sign somewhere that made a huge difference in my life and my career. It said, Assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. <laughs> Think about what that means. One of the things it means is that if you ask someone to do something for you, never assume it will get done or done right. You have to be responsible for what someone else does or doesn't do for you. Double check everything that you will be responsible for. You need to do the things you say you're going to do. People should know they can depend on you. Remember that phrase, phrase I will say it again, as it may be the most valuable thing I say to you today. Assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. It, it can pertain to so many things. I promise, if you remember it, one day it will make a difference. It's possible that not all of you gradu who graduate today will wind up in the entertainment industry. Many people get frustrated and begin to think it's not worth sticking it out. It's, after all, a tough competitive business. It can take patience and fortitude to hang in there during the toughest of times. Success rarely comes quickly. Your talent is essential but it's not going to be enough on its own. You will need to keep your eyes and ears open, take chances, and watch for the right openings, especially early in your careers. Be open to opportunities as you never know who or what they can lead to. During the five years I spent at William Morris, there were times when I felt the layers of important agents ahead of me would make it impossible for me to move forward. I used to think that some of them would have to either quit, die, or go to jail for me to succeed. Lucky for me, it turned out many did quit, die, or go to jail. <laughs> and my career as an agent moved forward. It was then that I learned anything is possible. And that includes relationships. Never underestimate their importance. For many of you, it all starts by finding an agent. And for most of your career, people will find it easy to say no to you. Your job is to find a way to turn those no's into yeses. Doing that will require perseverance, resourcefulness, determination, personality, talent, and luck. Whether you want to act, write, direct, produce, you're going to need someone to champion you. Doing your craft will be the easiest thing, and for most of you, finding that person, preferably an agent, will be the hardest. Find a way to get yourself or your material to someone. Ask everyone you know if they know an agent that can introduce you to, an agent they can introduce you to. Ask your friends, your family, your friend's family, your mechanic, your doctor, your hairdresser, your professors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just please don't ask me. <laughs> you no doubt came to the school because somewhere along the way you fell in love with the art and craft of storytelling. There is still nothing better than experiencing the magic of a clever and inspired play watching a well-crafted television show, or seeing a movie that really moves you. Stories unite us in shared ways, while at the same time affecting us as individuals. It's an extraordinary way to make a living. I feel fortunate and proud each day to be part of such a great business. The industry will be different for you when, than when I started 50 years ago. You're facing a volatile world, an unpredictable political environment, and an uncertain economy, more competition than ever, and challenges to the economic model of virtually every aspect of our business. All of this can be overcome. Try and not be discouraged by people talking about the decline and problems in our business. It's a great business with endless opportunities. People have always predicted doom and gloom, and as far as I can see, they've been and continue to be wrong. Audiences of every age all over the world will need to and want to be entertained in one form or another. I've always felt it's a miracle when a buyer says yes to an individual or a project. And the good news for you 
is that these miracles happen every day. I'm going to leave you with a quick story from early in CA's history when I signed one of the agencies and my most important client, Sylvester Stallone. You're too young to know what an important worldwide superstar Sly was right after Rocky and Rambo were released, and for many years after. If word got out that he was in a restaurant or store, a mob would quickly gather outside waiting for a glimpse of him. And this was long before so social media existed. In addition to our professional relationship, Sly and I became good friends, and he often asked me to accompany him on location scouts. We went to the Far East for Rambo too. We were deep in the jungles of Thailand. There were many huts and few houses. The people lived without any form of electrical conveniences, and it was hard to imagine they had television or had ever seen a movie. We were in a small motorboat going up the river when suddenly we heard choruses of Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. Villagers were running along the banks of the river, cheering and trying to keep up with us so they could see as much of Stallone as possible. Here's why I'm telling you this. It's hard to comprehend the impact that film and television and movie stars have on our culture. The business you've been studying and dreaming about is truly an amazing business, and you'll have a great responsibility to tell compelling stories to audiences around the world. You will have the opportunity to help shape the future of our business with new, clever, invented, inventive, and different ideas and ways to entertain. Today you're graduating from one of the finest film, television, interactive media schools in the country. Believe in yourself and your future, Look for opportunities to create legacies of your own. Refuse to give up. If I can make it, you can make it. Anything and everything is possible. Thank you and good luck.